Hello everyone and welcome back to my flight career series. This time we are going to start out in X-Plane 11 but we will continue in Microsoft Flight Simulator and the reason we're starting off in X-Plane 11 is I wanted to try out one thing with the V Skylab's Contraventus solar aircraft and that is well um, how does it do at night? Um, Oh, I've, I think I've got some wind because there is a very persistent tendency to the left and all the rudder in the world does not seem to be able to control this. This might not have been the best time to do this. Uh, let's see. I'll, I'll try and just full throttle it. Okay, I think I've got enough speed that I can take care of it now. Well, we can take a look at the, at the electric charge. And maybe I can zoom in so you can see... We've got six knots of wind was what was giving me trouble right there. And that's a lot when, you know, taking off requires less than 15 knots. But here we are, uh, still at Seattle, we were taking off from Boeing Field. And I'm going to take it down to half charge. And however high we get with that. And then we'll just try and land back at Boeing Field. But I want to see whether it recharges or not. Just a simple question, right? Uh, our charge is the fuel indicator right there. Obviously, if it recharges just as well at night as it does during the day, we have uh, a bit of a unfortunate situation, right? I mean, it's not completely accurate. Though, obviously, if we want to have little adventures with this particular aircraft, it's still fine. We just won't fly at night and thereby be a little, you know, maintain some sense of realism, but Let's see if it just handles it on its own. Here, I've shut it down. and Of course, there will be some recharging due to the windmilling of the propeller. But we're hoping to see that there isn't too much recharging. That's all. I mean, I imagine that it requires a special plug-in to have a solar power plane. I don't think the usual aircraft maker... Um, whatever they call it, plane maker in X-Plane 11 is suited to solar powered planes. I'm not sure. I haven't tried. It is recharging a little bit though. Even though it's still on the plus side there. You can see it's gone up. I stopped it at half and it's already close to three quarters. Now it said that the windmilling of the propeller recharges it if the RPM is above 15%. But it's only at 10%, so I don't know. So yeah, the verdict on this one is it is taking a little bit longer to recharge, but it is st still sort of recharging. I'm going to throttle up now because we have to turn to make our landing, and if I don't throttle up, we're going to bump into some buildings here. I really like the look of the traffic on the highways at night here. So after I land this, we're going to go back to... Microsoft Flight Sim 10 and I'm going to fly the Lancare Legacy back down to Hayward after that uh, probably not in this episode maybe maybe we'll uh, do a quick flight in the Cessna 172 in X-Plane 11 then uh, to try out the reality expansion pack which I got for the Cessna 172 but that's only going to be doable in in X-Plane 11 and not in Microsoft Flight Sim, of course. I'm aiming for that uh, small runway so I don't accidentally bump into anybody taking off on the main runway. But it's actually going to take a little while for us to get to that small runway. Ah, uh, this plane. Oh, uh, I noticed the uh, light coming in the opposite direction and that's a KC-10 extender. It sure looks aimed for the runway that I'm trying to land on. Uh, it should be using the big runway not the small runway darn it. Oh god I think it's taking the small runway. Yep. What kind of a KC-10 extender would land at the small runway? Get off of the runway. Whoa, I don't think it's going to make it. I think, yeah. Uh, holy mackerel. It did not 
Okay, I need to use a little bit of engine. I went off to the left in order to avoid the KC-10 totally, totally not stopping in the runway. The AI pilots in x men 11, though, they get to be a bit weird. 30. Obviously, this is not a proper landing direction, <laughs> given the the approach from the extender. 20. I'm landing a little bit early, but okay. Well, it appears to be raining here at Bremerton. I had to make a little commute between Boeing Field and Bremerton. Unfortunately, a little bit of a disconnect there, but the Landcare Legacy was still at Bremerton, so this is where we are. And I don't think it's unreasonable to uh, travel 18 miles. So, yep. Okay, well, well, we, we may have some IFR stuff to do. Okay. Oh, 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 we need to stop, 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 stop. We haven't gotten any passengers. Surely we need to... Ooh, a little bit of smoke going down. Yeah, we need some passengers. Says, this aircraft needs some work, the gear is damaged. We cannot allow you to fly with it. Please repair this aircraft in the company manager. Okay. I didn't realize I damaged the landing gear. Alright. Yeah, yeah, okay, uh. With part paid by insurance. No, no, no. Let's not. Let's not increase our insurance premiums or anything. Okay. We'll take two passengers and a tiny bit of cargo. We don't need all the fuel. Okay, so it is a normal flight and the destination is Hayward. And we will expect to arrive there in two hours and 20 minutes. Destination set. Okay. They're a bit afraid because of the weather conditions. Okay, but here we go. Okay, uh, let's try and climb above the clouds, but I don't know if we can do that. Our assigned cruising altitude is going to be 12,000 feet. Nope, these guys... Oh, wait, that turned it on. I don't know why I need two of them, but okay. Expires November 22nd. That doesn't seem good but all right enter enter well we've got some things on the stack but I still have my transponder and everything let's see no? oh oh there we go all right that's on now good times things are starting to work So I've got VOR to VOR, so we're just going to stay on that track if there's too many clouds. Okay, uh, there seems to be a limit to the clouds, and it's about 12,000 feet. So maybe we can get above them. Yep, seems to be smooth for the passengers. They don't say anything about turbulence, so I'll take the seatbelt sign off. Good times. 
Well, it's a clearer day than when we came up, and there's Mount Rainier again. Now, things have been going fairly smoothly, but I seem to recall that I uh, did include a random failure rate when I started the FS Passenger's career, and certainly Microsoft Flight Sim is capable of inducing a random failure. So I do have to watch out for that. It's not... I mean, it'll come up unexpectedly and then I'm gonna have to deal with it, but I always have to be on my toes. And x 11 has the same thing, it does have a random failure option. And now with the reality expansion pack that I got for the Cessna 172, it's gonna have additional sorts of failures. And we'll be taking a look at that once we get to Hayward. Romeo Alpha 867, traffic is 10 o'clock, 4 miles at 12,000 feet. Baron, report them in sight. Uh, same altitude? I can't see any beach, Baron. Ten o'clock, four miles, twelve thousand beach baron, not in sight. Don't have the traffic. Yep, I don't see him. Oh there he is now. Maybe Okay, traffic in sight. Of course, the Beach Baron is only in sight because we've got that flashing red text <laughs> to indicate he's there. Otherwise, I don't think I could have spot him. Then, okay, really zooming. Whoa, really zooming in. We can sort of see him. There we go. We're passing right by. We're faster. Okay, but I need to pay attention. We're approaching. Oops, we've gone. To the opposite side of the track. Oh, actually, the GPS shows us in line. It's the nav. I don't know why there's a difference between the two, even though we've got the same inbound heading. But whatever. The nav one shows us a little bit too far to the right. Okay, that's getting closer. All right. 169 nautical miles it says and that should take about 40 minutes outside it's still pretty cloudy we're over Oregon now but we can't see much of it well we're over Oregon still and we are still above the clouds but they seem to be building up up front. I think we'll still be clear of them. So far no problems. We're a little bit off track, but not too badly. It depends on whether you're looking at the GPS or the nav. Nav says we're in one direction, GPS says the other. Okay, we have some turbulence, so belt on. We are in the midst of a cloud now. You can see the cloud line there. It looks like they are above 12,000 feet. We're continuing to navigate via VOR and OED is the next VOR station, 65 nautical miles. And we're still okay. Okay, well, the GPS has automatically switched to Red Bluff VOR. And we're wandering a bit away from the previous one. Alright, well, let's go with Red Bluff. Red Bluff, we need 151, it says. So, of course, adjust 151. We're over KMFR, and that's Medford. So, I guess OED is also associated with Medford, Oregon. So just uh, the southern part of Oregon now. 
According to flight plan, it's going to take us just a little over an hour to get to Hayward, so we're running a little bit late. Though we seem to be going a bit faster than we were before. I think we were at 248 knots and now we're at 263 ground speed. Um, we could possibly throw up just a little bit and still... No, even throwing a little bit up seems to get us into the yellow zone. Okay, the clouds have cleared somewhat, but we have more turbulence. And to our left, I think that's Mount Shasta, maybe. Okay, we are approaching Red Bluff. We are now seven nautical miles away. And after that, we've got uh, still about 150 Morning, nautical miles to go. Airport is one, one mile. Stay here at one o'clock. Turn right, heading 355. Port runway in sight. It's sort of surprising to see this many clouds over the Central Valley of California right now. Uh, but, still, uh, relatively clearer than it was over Washington and Oregon. Not much down there to see, though, at the moment. We are 11 nautical miles north of the next VOR and then we'll be tuning SGD I've actually got preps already so we are ready to go gotta say fuel wise things are a lot tighter than I thought they would be and also timing wise but uh, we are not far away from our target location so I think it'll be all right right now we've got 27 gallons per hour fuel flow and we've got 17 gallons on board that will be enough okay so admittedly we are running a little bit late planned arrival in three minutes and we are approaching uh, this VOR after which we've probably got about seven minutes to Hayward. So we should probably start descending to be honest. I mean, that's the bay up front. And it's time to break out the Hayward chart. Oh, actually, the approach comes in from the south, not from... Oh, wait, I can find the one from the north. But the listed approach with all the details seems to be just for 28 left. As far as I can tell, uh, 10 left or 28 right is... is a little bit looser, but possibly just VFR. Which is fine for us this time. Well, we're way high. I can see Hayward Airport right there. Okay, well, we're actually going to try the main runway landing then. So we need to level off and we'll just do the proper approach into runway 28 left. Which is going to require us to get some distance away actually. Problem is the stuff I need is in this dark blue color which I can't really see very well. wonder if there's a way of changing the color like that. We can pick it up from 3,200, let's communicate with the airport. Nearest airport list, Hayward Executive. And Tune Tower, request full stop. Line. Hayward Tower, Romeo Alpha 867 is 8 miles southeast with Victor to land. Romeo Alpha 867, Hayward Tower, you entered right downwind, runway 10 right, altimeter 3022. Well, they want one zero right. Right traffic, runway one zero right, Romeo Alpha eight six well, seven. I guess we can't really argue with that. Alright, fine. 
I mean, if one zero right is what they want, one zero right is what they get. We are low on fuel, but that's expected. I deliberately did not carry more fuel than I needed. We had enough for reserves and to head for an alternate airport sort of thing. Romeo Alpha 867, cleared to land, runway 10 right. Okay. Cleared to land, runway 10 right, Romeo Alpha 867. Again, I mean, even on the GPS, it shows that the approach is supposed to be 28 and not 10 right. I mean, you can see from the GPS that there is no approach in this direction. But again, this is this is what they wanted. Fine, fine. Warning. Low fuel. Okay, that's in one tank, you know. Low fuel. Warning. I I'm busy. Warning. Low fuel. I'm busy. Low fuel. Can you do that some other time? Low fuel. Please. Warning. Low fuel. Please. Warning. Stop that. Warning. Low fuel. Warning. Low fuel. It was a rough landing. Low fuel. My my passengers are not happy. Not to mention the low fuel thing. There we go. I can reach for the caution now. We're arriving way late and they're not going to happy, be happy with that or the landing or a bunch of other stuff. Passenger satisfaction. Oh, and I'm sure I'm going to get ding points for just the fuel warning. Yeah, that's not going to work very well. No in flight I didn't ask for an in flight refuel. Hold on, I'll show you what's going on here. Yeah, it's uh expecting thinking that I wanted an in flight refuel, I do not. I just want that guy to keep quiet. Stop. Okay. And then all uh passengers can unbuckle and we end flight. Okay, so well it said the nice touchdown. Um, irritated by excessive g-forces is quite a thing. Uh, two g's apparently at some point, probably close to landing. Mm, bad. Arrive too late at destination. Require you to have sufficient fuel reserves upon landing. 45 minutes they wanted. I only had reserves for 15 minutes. I think feel like 40, well anyway, I probably should have had 45 minutes then. Um... Of course, the thing is, I what it's not taking into consideration is I basically used 23 minutes and 51 seconds of my reserve fuel for the whole... I was trying to approach the runway uh, at runway 28 left, and then they told me to go for 18. Uh, it's not 18, 10 right. And so that whole trying to go on one approach and then ending up going on the other took an extra amount of time. Excuses, excuses, I know. Anyway, um, passenger opinion was not great. They considered a very nice landing. I'm sure people might not consider it that. But it is what it is. So that is logged, and I'm back at Hayward, where I am back with the Cessna 172, and we'll see what we can do with that. On that note, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.